Um, I think one of the most, one of the very interesting pieces was the quilt that's on the wall, um, sort of in the background there. Lucy Ina Fong loaned this beautiful Hawaiian quilt, and I think the label pretty much describes um, or gives the idea of how, uh, of what the nature of these labels in the exhibition were about, or how they, how they were developed. I'm going to read the label that uh, we had for the quilt by Lucy Ina Fong. Don't bring any more peaches, Lucy Ina admonished her suitor as he sat beside her in the Hana Theater. Harry Fong longed to pursue the acquaintance of the pretty young woman who each morning on her way to work at Hana Hospital crossed the bridge that he was constructing. Previously, she had ignored him. Even when he brought her Keokea peaches for, to the hospital for her. But now, despite her reluctance, she grew to like the young man. They were married in 1947. When Harry brought Lucy to live in Keokea, his mother made this quilt for Lucy. For her, this quilt was one of the most, this was the treasured object. And, the, the, and what it happens is, is the quilt becomes the symbol of, the, of this couple and their family. Next to the quilt is one of the more um, interesting objects in the exhibition, and that is the vase of Gibera daisies. We went to the house of a fairly wealthy Kama'aina family on uh, Maui. And uh, just the house was just full of wonderful antiques and beautiful objects of art. And I was just um, sort of overwhelmed in, in that particular visit that I uh, made and that interview that we conducted. And it was like, you know, the people were so uh, generous and said, you know, we could have anything we wanted in there. And it was like, oh my gosh, how does one begin to make a decision on um, any one of these wonderful objects? And that, would be, that became the big dilemma in this particular case because the whole exhibition could have been just from their house. Um, and as we walked out the back door, I mean, for, we went through the house, I mean, through several stories of the house, and, and as we eventually came back downstairs, we went out the back door of the kitchen. And as we were walking out the back door, I saw this sort of little garden area with all these Gabara daisies, uh, pink daisies there. And I commented about how beautiful they looked. And then they related the story about how those, the original plants were originally brought from New England by the missionary family. And they planted them there. And the tradition in the family is that every time uh, someone in the family gets married, on their wedding day, they are given some of those plants. And so these plants are just, they keep going from one generation to the next. And when I heard this story, I said, that's it. That's what we need. It's just, this is what symbolized the sort of continuity of that family, something that was extremely important, that had come all the way from New England, and now was being handed down from one generation to the next uh, for years and years and years, for probably a couple hundred years already. Um, or nearly a couple hundred years. So, um, so it gives you an idea of the nature of what this exhibition was. It wasn't always about the most important object monetarily. It was about the meaning of these objects to the people, again, the meaning of these objects to the people. And what was exciting is, is that every so many days, this family would rush down from, from Kula, with a fresh bouquet of, of, of Gabara daisies. And they would, they would replace the ones that had gotten a little wilted uh, from being in the gallery. Uh, so it 
it kind of gives you an idea of what this, uh, uh, you know, how this exhibition came about. The uh, Wilson family had this uh, hachimaki, or headband, that was worn by a Japanese pilot in World War II. His plane was shot down um, in one of the Pacific Islands. And uh, it had come from their uncle, uh, William Wilson, who was a doctor in Guadalcanal during World War II. As he was um, trying to help the Japanese pilot, the pilot died. And just before he died, he uh, handed the headband to the doctor. And in Japan, it was very important that these headbands, which contained the family name and uh, messages from friends, would be given back to the family. And the Wilson family, for years, tried to find the Japanese family to return this headband to, to them. They were never able to. And so for them, this, I mean, even though um, they have no relationship to the Japanese family, they don't even know, uh, um, you know, w what has happened to the descendants or the family of, of the pilot. Um, this headband has become a treasured object for this family. And they, are always, they express the hope that maybe someday this will be, a, you know, the, this will be able to re be returned to the family.